Well, hello and welcome, everybody. I've got a really cool calculus problem here that I'd like to share with you. Let's hang out, do a little bit of math. Maybe we will learn something. I know we're going to have a good time. Let's get into the details of this problem right here, shall we? So here's what we've got. We've got a parabola. It is x minus 3 squared divided by 2 plus 1. And this line in blue is tangent to the parabola and also passes through the point 2, negative 3. Our job, find the values of a and b. Now, this is a problem that was assigned to my IB math class here recently. I thought it was a super cool problem. I thought I'd share it with you here on YouTube. If you'd like to give it a try on your own, go ahead and do it now because I'm going to dive into it. Well, now. All right. So first thing first, even though this one is pretty easy to answer, what are we being asked? That's always where you should start. Be very explicit. What is it you're looking for? Here we're looking for the coordinate A comma B. All right, well, what are our clues? What's special about that point A comma B? Well, A comma B is the point of tangency. So that means the slope of the blue line is equal to the slope of the parabola at that point. And the reason that's a clue is because I can write the slope for both of these. And I know they're equal right there. So I could actually write two equations. I could write an equation for the slope of the parabola at this point, And I can write a formula for the slope of this blue line. Now, I just jumped right to that. That was not entirely obvious to me when I did this problem the first time at all. So sometimes when you're watching stuff on YouTube or getting help from somebody, maybe they see the answer right away. Maybe they have practiced it and know it. Don't feel bad about it. A lot of times you chase bad ideas or ideas that don't work out. Maybe they, don't, maybe they weren't necessarily bad. And that's just all part of the fun, right? Now, Here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to write an equation for the slope using calculus for the slope of f of x, which is the parabola. And we're going to try to write an equation for the slope of the line. And we know they're equal, so we're going to set them equal. All right? So if you tried it already and you got stuck and you're here now, why don't you go ahead and pause the video? Maybe this is enough of a clue to get you over the hump so you can solve it on your own. All right? All right, so now, the way we're going to find the slope of f of x is, well, we're going to take the derivative of f of x, and then we're going to plug in a. Let's, and then the way we're going to find the slope of the line, well, if it was y equals mx plus b, and we knew what all those values were, well, the coefficient of x would be the slope. Well, no such luck. We have two points, so we're going to have to use the slope formula, change of y over change of x. You ready? Let's dive into the calculus part. f of x equals x minus 3 squared divided by 2 plus 1. Now, it's assumed that you already know how to take the derivative of something like this. Actually, if all you know is the power rule, that's enough. You could distribute this and simplify it, and you would find that the uh, derivative is x minus 3. You could use the chain rule as well. It's actually not as bad as it looks. But x minus 3 is the derivative of this equation right here. And so the slope at x equals a would be a minus 3. Now, just to make sure we're clear, x minus 3 is not the equation of the blue line. The blue line is tangent at a comma b. What this equation does, x minus 3, is it tells you the slope of the parabola at any value of x. All you got to do is plug it in. And here we can see whatever value of x you want to talk about, the slope is 3 less than that. All right, so let's keep that over there, and let's talk about the linear part, which is, I think, considerably more difficult. So change of y over change of x, we have the point a, b, and 2, negative 3. Let's plug in the values. B minus negative 3 is, of course, B plus 3. And then A minus 2, well, that's the difference of the x's. So here's our two equations. This is the equation for the slope of the parabola. This is the formula or the equation for the slope of the line. Let's go ahead and set them equal to each other like this right here. All right, now we have one major, major problem. We have one equation here, and we have two unknowns, A and B. So either we need to come up with another equation that we can solve and substitute, or we need to figure out another way to express b in terms of a. And that's what we're going to do. You see, a comma b, that's an ordered pair on the parabola. That means that a is the input and b is the output. So if we take our original equation, plug a into it, just figure out what is f of a, that's what b is. f of a is b. That's what this means. a is the input, b is the output. So b is equal to a minus 3 squared divided by 2 plus 1. So let's take that b and replace it right here in red, right? a minus 3 squared divided by 2 plus 1. So let's see if we can clean this up and simplify it. We're going to have to solve this equation. 
If we just take our time, it's not going to be too bad. But from here on out, there's no more calculus. This is all just algebra, right? Not that that makes it easy, but let's go ahead and do that. Now, 3 plus 1, that's 4. And from here, you could use any steps you want. But as long as you're using the order of operations correctly and inverse operations correctly, no wrong way to do it. I'm going to share with you the way I do it. I'd multiply both sides by a minus 2 to try to get rid of some fractions right here. Go ahead and distribute a minus 2 times a minus 3, a squared minus 5a plus 6. And then over here, I don't like that 2 right there. I mean, a lot of people hate fractions. I don't hate them at all, but they're easy to mess up. So let's multiply everything on both sides by 2. So that would be 2a squared minus 10a plus 12 over here. And on the right, well, these 2s are going to cancel, and 4 times 2 is, of course, 8. So we're going to just go ahead and square this and clean it all up. Let's make some space. a minus 3 squared, that's, of course, a squared minus 6a plus 9. And just moving everything over to the left-hand side, 17. Subtracting that from 12, you get negative 5. You're going to add 6a to both sides, gives you 4a, and you're going to subtract a squared from 2a squared, so you end up with a squared minus 4a minus 5 equals 0. That's a beautiful quadratic, 100% factorable, a minus 5, a plus 1. So that gets, leaves us with two answers, 5 and negative 1. And how do you know which one it is? Well, let's go back to our original problem. Let's look at our picture. a comma b is in the first quadrant. That means that x is positive. So x has to be a positive number, so it can't be negative 1, so 5. All right. We know A to find B. All we got to do is plug A back in to our expression right here. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 squared, 4 divided by 2, famously known as 2. And one more than that would make 3. Man, I think that's a really cool problem right there. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something, had a good time. If you did, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you had a good time, you learned something, give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of happy, cool stuff. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.